Hello, hello. Welcome back. Happy Monday. I'm Claire. This is Purple Poppy. And today I've come along for the Monday make. This is the sheet that is in the Facebook group. It's a sort of mottly, pinky, creamy colour. And it's all about the words today. And I just added a couple of pictures for interest. So... Um, while we're doing this, a little word to the wise, I did try to print it on vellum and on my Epsom 2750, doesn't work. It's printed obviously on the end here, which is the masking tape, which is really interesting. It does mean that potentially, is that actually drying? Yeah, it's drying and it's smudge proof. So potentially I could actually... Put some masking tape strips there and pull that off. I might play with that later. But it didn't like printing on the actual vellum. So anyway, here's our page. And what I've also got on my desk is one of these large cardboard envelopes. And I've split it on all three sides. A, because I want to use this lovely brown craft paper. And B, at a later stage, this will become a journal cover. So I'm going to put that to one side because I want to work with this today. And what I thought I would do with this is I would look at making a pocket and a tag. So I'm going to tear off my white bits as always. I know pockets and tags seem to be the um, go-to, but... You know, when you're making journals, you just don't ever have enough somehow. So I think it pays to make um, uni uh, universal ones that you've got ready. And I've printed this just on my standard um, 80 gram in the UK. I'm afraid I don't know what that is in pounds. Um, 80 gram copy of paper nothing special at all okay right so I've got rid of my white now what I'm thinking is I want to overlap him with that letter somehow on a tag and I want to use probably that Jane Austen one as my pocket so I'm gonna tear down here like so and then I'm gonna tear down there so I've basically got the three pieces uh, I'm going to pull off this Jane Austen one I may well use that lace as well but I like that one and I want to overlap him don't I and I think what I want to do with him is I want to give him an extra frame so you can see there's actually a frame around the photograph but I want to give him this paper frame as well so make sure there's a fairly even amount of that that wasn't very good was it I've done that a bit skew with but then hey don't I always it's a glorious day here brilliant sunshine and it's very very deceitful because if you go off outside, it's quite chilly. <laughs> so, that one, I'm going to tear right up to the letter. I don't want the um, background on this bit. I just wanted it on that photograph. And then I will, as always, obviously, have a little inking session in a minute. And all my edges. Oh, I can't get a grip on that for some reason. Let's try again. You see, I don't mind it like that. I think that sort of adds to the shabbiness. I don't mind that at all. That's fine. And I'm not going to use this bit, so I'm going to set that aside up there as well. 
So I've got my three components here, which means I need some of this brown paper for my pocket and I need some for my tag. So what I'm going to do is I know, we all know by now that I like my tags to be at six. So I'm going to slide my ruler and I'm going to tear off six inches in, okay? And then we know that I want, let's get rid of that rough bit there. Okay, like so. Let's bring up the guillotine. Okay, so we know we've got six inches high. We want three inches tall for our tag. Like so, that's my printer shutting off. Do you know? right here right I'm sorry I, I know I went a little bit mad there for a minute straight line is it let's go for two and three quarters so that is two and three quarters and that's two and three quarters that's better I don't know what the goodness I was playing at there that's much better okay so we've got our tag and now we need our pocket now this is now not going to be big enough for my pocket is it so I miscut that so where's the wording here's the wording and we want to fold back so I'm actually going to just chop it all the way down there like that and then I'm going to chop it over there like that and again that's not a straight line seriously what is going on here is absolutely balmy hmm I don't know we'll have to have a, have a look at that but anyway um let's not worry too much about it now let's get our scoreboard out get rid of those pieces now Yes, it's that side there, isn't it? That's better. All right. Let's bring this up. Where's my little blue scory? Okay, so I'm going in half an inch on each side well on those two sides and then I just want to see how much extra I've got to where our words are going oh I've got loads extra so we're going to trim that off aren't we because I want it to be half an inch uh, so three quarters of an inch past that paper 
because if I now line that up and go half an inch like that okay so we have got our pocket now get my scissors as always I'm gonna trim that corner off I'm gonna trim that corner off that little triangle whoops and that little triangle get rid of all of them I think we are gonna have some of this old paper in the background I'm gonna tear that across there I don't know what's going on oh I don't know what's going on with my measurements today I really don't let's get a fresh piece out of here not sure if it's my eyes I need to go and have tested on my brain but something's uh, off the small nearly isn't it use this one there we go okay now obviously you can use any book page for this any paper you don't need to be using something vintage i just have it on my desk so it's what i'm using off this so turn it by hand in a sort of oval shape like so and I'm going to put that there because obviously staying at home and words and there's a book in the background it all makes sense to me so let's bend over our corners get these inked up you can't make anything without a bit of grungy ink not if you're in my world i can't help myself as you all know by now I will put some hold in but I'm going to put it in after I put my top papers on I'm going to ink these as well very gently on these because being old they're brittle and fragile while well, they always need to be backed and sometimes in a lot of ways you are better when you scan them because obviously they've got more strength to the print out And of course, when they've been scanned, they are preserved. Whereas once you use them, they're gone. And obviously these books are now getting rarer and rarer. So, right, let's find a glue book. Glue book. Ink this up. Often um, we make these tags and pockets semi in sets because we use the same papers but very often rather than using them actually together because also of course this tag is going to be very narrow to go in here um, it's nice just to use them in the same book rather than actually together because then you obviously keep the continuity of colour and theme running through your book and we will 
want this one about there What's that one okay where's my bone folder just get these to bend down nicely just so they're that little bit firmer fold especially now I've opened them back out once there we go so let's oh, get a punch this is often easier said than done and I've just got this this is a one and a half inch circle and I'm doing it by eye and I'm going there and then I'm just going to ink up where we've pulled that out so there's our pocket now let's make our tag so I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to use vintage paper just for my background I'm trying to find a page that's all words because obviously then we don't lose any images okay so oh wrong ruler okay, I told you going crazy today oh one thing I was going to mention um may not be particularly relevant to you but I was watching the lovely Gail Gastonelli uh, yesterday morning I believe it was and she was making comments of the fact that she'd heard on the grapevine that Mr Holtz although he's talked many times about how expensive these things are but anyway that Mr Holtz was stopping doing 12 by 12 pads and funny enough, um, I've been on Tinternet this morning. I haven't been shopping, honest. Wouldn't spend money, that's bad. <laughs> um, and nearly every designer paper pad or scrapbook pad, whatever you want to call it, that I have seen has been an A4. So maybe this is the way we're going forward i must admit i have often thought that the 12 by 12s left you a lot of wasted which is one of the reasons we have so many scraps um because when you fold it you know into the 6 by 12 for a cover or something it's way too long la di da di da so it may well be that yes, we are moving into the age of the A4 pad rather than the 12 by 12 Be interesting to watch and see. So yes, Gal, I don't know if it does apply to Mr. Holtz, but definitely all the pads that I could find this morning that were from UK makers or UK sellers were all in the A4 size interesting i think definitely for us that use an a4 size um in a paper you know it makes life a little bit easier i don't know whoops why we had the 12 to 12 to 12 by 12 to start with i'm honest i'm sure somebody knows i wonder if it was something to do with scrapbooking because i know originally they were sort of designed as scrapbooking papers weren't they right now as you can see here i've put my finger through that but because i'm going to overlay it's not majorly important so i've now actually got to trim this letter further haven't i because it's too wide for my tag so let's trim it like that and I think I'm going to hang it off the edge I 
So yeah, that's interesting. Looks like things they be are changing. I'm just wondering if I've got any of this sort of pinky coloured lace or ribbon or something that I can use for a top top knot on my tag. Gonna bring that white to the edge, make sure it's up the right way, you know what I'm like. And then this one I'm gonna put as it were the other way, but I am gonna trim it off there. I know I said I wanted a frame but I think I'm going to do it that way now. And I might even take off some of the top. We're allowed to change our minds, that's what it's all about. I'm going to put him over the top there like that. I'll have to have a look, see what I can find in the pinky line. Although I think that grey baker's twine that I've got might work quite nice there. I'll have a little look. I'm going to put him This there. Now I know I've not cut my corners off um, today. I thought it might be nice just to have it square. And then do we want to use, I think we're going to use this piece of lace. So it does go around the corner. So obviously I'm just going to come down a little bit and lose a tiny bit of that top in order to get the straight line. And then I'm going to tear it right below and I'm going to fussy cut. So I'm going to trim that off and then I'm just going to very roughly, doing it very quickly and very unprecise, just to get an interesting shape rather than a proper fussy cut. Obviously you can definitely do it much better than this if you haven't got a camera in front of you and you're leisurely fussy cutting like so and then that can sit just across the bottom there going to bring it up slightly from the bottom like so spin it over trim it off trim off that little excess piece there just make sure we didn't trim off too much of our inking there you go Right, I need to find something for the top there, don't I? Although we've got black lace there, so I think black lace probably is the answer. So I've rummaged in my lace box and let's have a bit of this of black lace that you can see there. Or at least I think you can see it there. So I'm just going to trim it off and I want to cut off these two little triangles and put it up there. So I'm just going to trim off those excess pieces. I'm going to put a blob there. And then a little bit there. So let's clear the decks for a minute. So today out of our group sheets we've got 
a nice tag and a pocket. As always, stay safe. Happy crafting. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.